In this video, we're going to learn about the ideal gas law. In previous lessons, we have already learned about other gas laws and the relationship between pressure, volume, temperature, and the amount of gas. As a review, the relationships look like this. We have Boyle's law, and Boyle's law relates pressure and volume. It says, as the pressure of a gas increases, the volume of a gas decreases. And we get a relationship of pressure times volume is going to be a constant. And then we have Charles' law, and Charles' law relates volume and temperature. It says that as the temperature of a gas increases, the volume of the gas also increases. And we end up with a relationship of volume divided by temperature is going to be equal to a constant. And lastly, we have Avogadro's law. And Avogadro's law relates the amount of gas, which we measure in number of moles, to the volume of gas. And it says that as the amount of gas increases, the volume of the gas also increases. And so we end up with the relationship of volume divided by the number of moles of gas is going to be equal to a constant. Now, these scientists didn't know it at the time, but they were actually all working with the same equation. It is the ideal gas law, and it looks like this. Now this law takes all of those relationships and put them into one big equation. And we end up with a very similar relationship with a constant. When we take pressure and volume and divide it by the number of moles and temperature, we get a constant. And we call this constant R. It's the ideal gas constant. Now this works for any gas, no matter the identity of the gas, it all works the same. We get the same value for R. And the number we end up with is 8.314. And the units of this value are liters times kilopascals over moles times kelvins. These are literally the units for this number. Just like when you measure a volume and you say maybe the volume is 1 liter, the unit of volume is a liter. This just happens to have all of these units uh, all together within its unit. There is one other version of R that we like to use. Uh, you can see that this version of R uses pressure units of kilopascals, but we can also have another version of R that uses units of atmospheres. There's actually a number of different versions of R, but I'll just give you one other one. And so in this case, the constant is using units of atmospheres instead of kilopascals. And so R changes a little bit to account for those units. So you want to use the correct constant with the units of pressure that you're working with in a question. So let's go ahead and look at a question, something that you might come across uh, in a chemistry class. So this question says, determine the number of moles of oxygen gas in a 10 liter tank when the gas is under a pressure of 2200 kilopascals and a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. It goes on to say how many grams of oxygen is this? So I like to underline the things I'm looking for in red. I want to find the number of moles of oxygen and I'm also going to find the number of grams of oxygen. And then I underline the given information in green just to help myself organize. What I usually like to do after that is just list along the side all of the information that I know. So I know the volume is 10 liters, and I know the pressure is 2200 kilopascals, and then I know that the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. I'm looking for number of moles, so I even like to just put in that symbol. I know that N stands for number of moles, and just put a question mark in there. One of the reasons I like to do this is because then I can convert any units I need to into SI units. It's really important that we use the standard units for each of these variables. Volume's always in liters. Pressure is usually in kilopascals. That is the SI unit. Temperature is in Kelvin. And so I'm going to need to convert this into Kelvin. I will add 273 in order to convert from Celsius to Kelvin. And so I end up with 298 Kelvin. Now I can go ahead and put my equation in. And I'm using the ideal gas uh, equation because I know volume, pressure, temperature, and I want to find number of moles. I'm going to rearrange this to solve for number of moles. So I can divide both sides by RT. And that's going to get rid of RT on that side and leave me with number of moles. Now it's a matter of plugging in the numbers and using the correct value of R. Remember, these are our two different R values here. And so I want to use the one that deals with KPA because that's the unit of pressure I'm working with. So I'm going to use this one right here. I'm going to plug everything into my equation. 
And now I can plug this into my calculator. And as uh, I'm doing that, I'm just going to show you the units of R and why they are the way they are. When you see the same unit, we can cross those off. They're going to cancel each other. And so the only thing we're left with here is going to be units of mole. And that's what I want my answer to be in. All right, so let's go ahead and write down what we get as an answer when we plug this into our calculator. And so we end up with 9.28 moles of oxygen gas. And the symbol for oxygen gas is going to be O2. So there's the first part of our answer. The second thing we want is to convert this into grams of oxygen gas. Usually questions are going to want grams rather than moles because we kind of understand grams a little bit better. So to convert this into grams, we're going to need to take this number and multiply it by the molar mass of oxygen gas. So we have 9.28 moles, and I'm going to look on a periodic table to find the molar mass of O2. So if we look here at oxygen, we can see that uh, the atomic mass for oxygen right here is 16, and there's two oxygens in this molecule, so we'll double that to 32. So we have 32 grams per mole, and so we're just taking 9.28 and multiplying that by 32, and we end up with 297 grams of O2. And so there's the second part to our answer. And so that's the ideal gas law and the equation and how to use it.